Hi. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're kind of almost there. We're, we're working with data in processing, and we've seen what a string is. We've seen how to draw text onto the screen. And now we've also seen the function split. The function split takes a string of text, it might be numbers, it might be words, it could be any sequence of characters, and chops it up somehow. The scenario that we're going to start with is, let's load a large body of text, uh, and let's count the number of times uh, every word appears in that body of text. The, the, the actual text I'm going to use in this scenario is the play Hamlet. You can get a lot of stuff from uh, a website called Project Gutenberg, which has a lot of uh, public domain text, and that's a, that's a great sort of thing to use in, in this type of scenario. So, but, <laughs> what did we start with? We had here, in this uh, example, this sort of like rudimentary data visualization example we started with, what's the data? It's this string that's hard-coded into the, the code itself. This is not, uh, this is not a practical, it's not the reality for us. What we want to do is get that data, that same data, that text from a file, a URL, uh, a website that has information about weather. What, what, there's some external source. We need to pull that stuff into processing. The way that we pull that stuff into processing is with the function load strings. Now, there are going to be other loading functions we'll see in a video or two from now, because sometimes the data comes in a very specific format, like comma-separated values, or something called XML, or something called JSON. We'll get into what those things exactly are in a bit. And in those cases, we might use load table, or load JSON, or load XML. But for any generic, just raw text, load strings is going to do the job for us. So what did we have? So uh, let's say we wanted to do something where we had a Shakespeare play as a string, to be or not to be. And we, we know we could use the split function and say split this text up by spaces, and now we have a, uh, a token, an array of where each element of the array is an individual word in this particular text. But I don't want to just hard code to be or not to be. I, let's say I have a file, and that file is called hamlet.txt and the entire Shakespeare play is in this file. Why can I say string s equals load strings, then the file name, hamlet.txt. This is just like what we did with images. I have a JPEG in my data folder. I'm going to load the JPEG in as a P image and draw to the screen. Now I have a text file in my data folder, right? Data is the data folder of the sketch is where any sort of media assets can go, images, fonts, data files. It's called data after all, hamlet.txt. So that's where this file can go. And if that file is there, I could use load strings and I've got it. And now it's in my string only, sadly, this is not exactly right. This is what we're looking for. We want the entire play into a single string so we can split it into words. But load strings actually does something slightly different, which at this moment of our life will seem rather inconvenient and annoying. But actually, it's a, it's a useful thing. Anyway, what is that thing? I'm beating around the bush here. Load strings actually takes a text file and loads it into an array of strings. What, why an array? Why would it ever possibly be an array? Well, let's say this is my text file. This is my text file. This is what's actually in the file, and, and each one of these is a line break or a carriage return. Load strings will take each line of text and make it a separate element in an array. So in other words, the first element of the array would be this is, the next element would be my, the next element would be text, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of scenarios where this is actually useful. For example, let's say I want to load uh, every word from the English language. And I have a text file that has every word from the English language on a separate line. I can just load it in, and suddenly I have an array with each word as, a, as an individual element in that array. And that, that could be a useful thing. In this case, we don't really, and, and, and there's lots of other scenarios where that array is useful. Um, actually, with comma-separated values, even though we could use table, it would make sense that each row on a spreadsheet would be a separate line, and we get that into an array. However, in this case, we don't want an array. We want the entire play in a single text file. And right now, we're going to get every line from the play into a, a different element. So what can we use? If I now say I want to put the entire play in a variable name that I name ham, the join function, the join function is the inverse of split. So while split takes a string, 
and chops it into an array. Join takes an array <laughs> and joins it all as one string. So what I'm doing here is it's kind of this strange thing is I, I have the text file, I load it into an array of strings, I join it so it's one long string, and what am I going to do immediately after that? I'm going to take, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to call split and split that text back up into an array of words. So <clears throat> this is the process. Text file, for, for, for a word counting applications, what we're starting with, load the file, it's a big array of strings, join it together, it's one long string with the entire play in it, and now I want to look at each word in that string, I've got to split it up again. So I, it's lines, which goes to one string, which is split again into words. I'm saying this way too many times to <laughs> edit this out. OK, I think I'm trying to convince myself that this makes sense. So let's look at actually doing that. So let's, just, uh, let's actually just start with this scenario. In this particular example, I'm going to revise it and say to be or not to be. And then what I'm going to do is say split uh, that string, not by a comma, but by a space. And let's give myself a setup. And let's give myself a draw. And let's make this a global variable. And let's make words. Sorry, I, have to, I should have adjusted this in advance. Make that a global variable. Split it in setup. And now, in draw, instead of doing an ellipse at every moment, let's, uh, sorry. Let's draw each word. So let's take a look at this. Run this. What did I get wrong? This is called words. Oh boy. OK. Uh, and let's do uh, text size 32 so we can see it a little bit better. We can see, there we go. Now we had a string we started with. We used split to split it up into an array of tokens, and then we're drawing each one of these words one at a time in an array. So this is, we're, we're kind of on the path here. Now, uh, let's think about this again. So to be or not to be, this was a single string. Let's look at the data folder. And now you can see here I have the entire play Hamlet right here in a text file. This is the text file. So what I can do here is say, load strings hamlet.txt and let's just print that out to the console we don't need this anymore well let's leave that there um, and you can see that in fact there's a huge array and that huge array has like almost 5,000 lines in it every element of that array is a single line of text from the play so what I want first want to do is I want to join that whole thing together OK, so now I'm going to say entire play equals join lines and put a space in between each line. Now let's print the entire play. Now we can see here, now all the text from the entire play is here down in the console. It's all in this single string. So this single string entire play is just like my string s up here. So let's take this out. And I'm not splitting up s anymore. I'm splitting up entire play. And let's do something slightly different. Uh, let's, have, let's keep track of an individual index. And let's just display, uh, I'm going to say, text align center, uh, words. I'm doing, uh, I don't know if I like the way I'm doing this video by building this whole example from scratch. Maybe you find it helpful. And I'm going to say index plus plus. Uh, background 0, fill 255, text size 64. Okay, so I just really, really quickly in here just put a little algorithm to display a single word at a time. Like we split up that whole play, which probably has thousands of words in it, and we're going to look at each word one at a time every time through draw. So index is 0, draw the first word. Go index goes up by 1, draw the second word. Just, and we don't need this location, can just be, we can draw all these words in the middle of the window. So here we go. We can see, look, this is every word in the play. Now you'll notice something. If we slow this down, let's just say uh, frame rate 5. 
if we slow this down, you can see that um, there's question marks and apostrophes and colons, and we don't really want that. When we go to actually count words, we want to, we want, um, and we, we looked at this before, but we have, we have a scenario where our text looks something like this. Hello, comma, my name is Dan? Question mark? Yes. <laughs> so if this is our text, what I want is hello, I want my, I want name, I want is, I want Dan, I want yes. I don't want any of the punctuation and I don't want any of the spaces. So just to remind you again, split, the function split takes a sequence of characters that acts as a delimiter. So if I put space in here, I'm going to get hello comma, then I'm going to get my name is Dan question mark, yes exclamation point. If I were to do something like say, oh, space, space, comma, it's actually going to look for a space and a comma as the thing to split, which is not what I want to look for. I want to say split anytime there's a space or a comma or an exclamation point or a question mark. And to do that, there is a function in processing called split tokens. And what that does is it takes any character that's in, it, that's any character that's here in a string, any one of these characters, individual characters, can be a delimiter. So if I come back to this particular program and I change this to split tokens, and I say, you know, comma, period, question mark, exclamation point, colon, you know, and the list goes on. We could come up with a lot of other possibilities. And I run this again, we can see now none of the punctuation is there. So I, you know, the apostrophe is there because I didn't include apostrophe as a possible delimiter. But we can see I'm getting one word at a time. Uh, just to uh, take a look in the console, I think this might be worth looking at. We can see everything is there. There are 29,603 individual words in this particular play, Hamlet. A couple things to point out here. One is, and if we look right here, we can see an example of this. Uh, we can see I've got cap T, cap the, capital T. So, Ultimately, what I want to do, and what we're going to do in the next video, is count how many times the word the appears. But the word the, and I probably, I already made the next video, and I probably already said this in the next video, so you might get this twice. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so capital, uh, sorry, we want to count the with a lowercase t and the with a capital case t, the capital T as the same word. So one thing I can add to this, by the way, is I can use the function words index dot two lowercase. So now if I add two lowercase here, we can see every single word is now uh, all lowercase characters, which will help us in, um, in the counting of them. Uh, so I think this really kind of like wraps up this particular scenario. What we've, what we, what, what, what this video, what I intended this video really to cover is simply how the load strings function works. So what I would suggest to you is find some text. Maybe that, maybe it's comma separated numbers and you want to draw a graph by using split and a comma. Maybe it's a different, find something else on Project Gutenberg or find something you wrote or get all of your emails into a text file. Do some type of visualization based on the stuff that's in a text file. And here, what, one of the things we're, we're doing here is every word is appearing on the screen no matter how many times it's in the play. So the next video we're going to look at, how do I know, I'm looking through every word, how do I know if this is one I've encountered before or if this is a new word? That's kind of the next piece. So you, you, could, you could try like your own version of that if you want, or certainly just try doing this but visualize it different. See if you can get every word up from the play like to fit on a, in a single processing window or, or something like that. So anyway, I'm rambling and I want to get to the next video, which, uh, and so, um, this will be the end of this one. Hopefully this was somehow somewhat helpful, even though, oh, it's only 14 minutes, which isn't so crazy. Okay, I have to stop it. Goodbye.